Paul Safali is a security guard um, and he had just started a 12 hour night shift at the News International Building, which is in central London, which is where News of the World um, and The Times and News UK was based. And it was April 2011. The story that was dominating the news was the phone hacking scandal. So obviously people were very um, uptight, they were very on edge. Um, and there was Paul Safali. He's a security guard, you know, takes his job very seriously. Um, and he was on the desk. He's starting his night shift. Um, and an IT manager walked in and the IT manager asked to be escorted up to the 10th floor, which is where all the directors, the executive directors officers were. Now, because it was uh, after hours, he couldn't just go up on his own. Paul had to escort him and he had to take the keys. He had to let them in. He had to let him in to the lift and then let him into the, onto the floor. And then he had to let him into this particular executive director's office. I escorted the IT manager into one of the director's offices. He replaced a hard drive and tower from that office and I escorted him back out of the office, closing the door behind. And when he was approaching the lift, he said to me that the director would be glad that he removed that hard drive for him and that the, he would be glad that the police would not get their hands on it. Now, that was quite a big deal to Paul. He realised that actually he was being asked to do something immoral and probably illegal. So when he got back down, he realised how significant this was um, and he wanted to do something about it. Um, he, he did not want to be colluding in a criminal act, so he actually reported it to his manager. But the manager responded in a way which was not reassuring for Paul at all. He spoke to um, the, the owner of the security company and uh, told me um, that I should keep quiet about it. I sent another email saying that I wasn't comfortable with that and that I have a clean record. I was looking at becoming a Canadian citizen and um, I didn't want to have my record blemish in any way whatsoever. And if there was any illegal activities going on, I did not want to be part of that. But nobody took him seriously. Nobody even bothered to ask him the details of what had happened, which Paul, being a meticulous kind of guy, had recorded and he'd written it all down and, and he'd written it all in these emails. So this is this is what he's expected to do. You know, when you're a security guard, you observe, you write down all the, the details um, of everything you see. That's part of your job. So that was something he was good at. <laughs> but he was furious that um, with his managers and, and he just didn't know what to do. Um, and he felt that he was having pressure put on him um, to protect staff at News of the World from the authorities, which, again, he was not, not happy about. Even we were told that if any police were to come into the building, that we have to notify our manager straight away um, and uh, not to let the police in. And I know that we can't stop the police, that they're allowed to come in. The story broke in the national media that an investigator from the News of the World had hacked into the phone of the murdered schoolgirl, Millie Dowler. If you remember, this was a huge deal at the time. And there was a massive wave of revulsion at the News of the World's practices that this was, this was hacking that had completely got out of hand. This had, you know, prevented the police from finding Millie Dowler and, and, and it, it given false hope to the parents. Now, that was all, it, it was quite a murky affair, but the fact is uh, that it was a big disaster for Rupert Murdoch, News International and the News of the World. It closed after 168 years in print. That's a long time. Um, there was no advertising revenue. Everybody wanted out of the News of the World. Um, and this was July, July 2011. And just days before the News of the World closed, Paul remembers that he and a colleague were asked to go into the offices again to empty the desks of personal items and take photographs of them. Now, his colleague told him that the boss of the security company, the guy he had 
tried to complain to before, had emptied the drawers of all the paperwork of the employees and taken them home and burned them in a pit in his garden. This is what Paul's colleague told him. The next day, this boss called Paul. He said, do you remember when we went on to News International's floor and we took all the paperwork and personal items out and we put it on the desk? And I said, hold on a minute. No, you took the paperwork out of the desk because I only took the personal items out and put them on the desk and took photographs of that. And he said, oh, okay. And he put the phone down to me. And I believe that he was trying to use me as an alibi to say that we all took paperwork out of the desk and put it and took photographs and that whatever he took away from the desk, um, we knew about, but I knew nothing of that. He did that by himself. After this, Paul says he was subjected to bullying and harassment, mostly from the owner of the security company, who'd obviously taken a <clears throat> dislike to Paul. Um, he even wrote a personal email to Rebecca Brooks, who was head of News International at the time, CEO, in fact, who he said he got on well with, but never heard back from her. And then one day, um, Paul Safali was on the floor where all the News International executives had their offices. And he noticed a poster advertising an alert line, a kind of whistleblower information pack of who to contact if an employee had information about wrongdoing. So Paul wrote an email complaining about the treatment he was receiving and his discomfort with the illegal activities he'd witnessed, um, which is the destruction of the computer hard drive and the boss of the company's efforts to get him to give him an alibi. So around this time, Paul was removed from the site of News International, pending an inquiry into what his bosses were alleging was fraudulent and illegal activity. So Paul was removed from the site he was very surprised to receive a summons from the HR department back at the News International site. Uh, and the, the, the HR department was asking him to come back to the building for a meeting. He was also surprised because he'd complained as a whistleblower to a special line and his actions were protected by law. So the HR department should not have known about his complaint, because that's not how it works. Whistleblowers are protected, then no one else, especially the HR department, is supposed to know about their whistleblowing activity. Um, because the HR department is the department that's responsible for hiring, firing or demoting him. I went to HR and when I went to the meeting, they asked me about what I knew about illegal activities. And I said, well, I really want to speak about the bullying and sexual harassment and intimidation and so forth that was going on, which affected me. Once again, they asked me about information I knew about what illegal activities that I was aware of. And it was clear to me that they weren't interested in anything I had to say, but clearly only interested on any information that I had that would help protect News International and nothing in, in which to protect myself. So obviously he felt incredibly let down by the organisation and by the HR department. Um, and he realised that um, now he had been exposed as a whistleblower. Um, he'd been identified and therefore his life was never going to be easy inside this um, company. There was never a meeting. There was never a hearing. I was never vindicated. I was ostracised. My, my, uh, I was, um, you could say, demoted. Um, all chances of prospects were gone, and um, it affected me. Uh, and, and I had a lot of problems with various managers and area managers and directors for the company I worked for. And I would say that I had about nine disciplinaries, um, and I also. Um, putting grievances against various managers because of the way I was treated and so forth. And all I ever wanted was an apology and to be vindicated of anything that I did wrong, because all I did was brought up what I thought was important information to my manager and the head of the company I was working for. And because of it, um, I felt that I was treated very unfairly.
Paul didn't want to let this experience end his career. He still works for the same company, the same security company, um, but it's on a different site with different bosses. And he says he's happy to be a witness in any proceedings against the people who he saw destroying evidence uh, to protect News International, as it was then, News UK, as it is now. <laughs> 